uh, kind of three-step process to that to really discover all the different moving parts and influences uh, when it comes to assessing if cloud communications is, is right. And the first thing is around discovering the benefits that are specific uh, to that customer's business. So if they're a retail organization or a manufacturing business or uh, you know maybe a bank or uh, someone in financial services, looking at what the specific benefits are of cloud communications that relate to, to their organization. Um, and then looking at things like the business case around that. So what are the benefits that are gonna come from cloud communications uh, and then what the investment looks like over you know, the initial investment and then the years one, two, and three after that. So that, that return on investment um, really stacks up uh, from a, a business perspective, you know, which is important to uh, get that sign off um, right across all the business stakeholders. And then determining the user experience is the next logical step in that planning process to work out uh, which people are gonna be using uh, the cloud PBX features, which might require the voicemail features, uh, who needs to be able to schedule uh, the PSDM conferences that uh, uh, Craig was mentioning before, uh, so that it's very clear about who's going to get what, um, and that there's a, a complete structure around that. And then lastly, analyzing uh, what the current state is and then what the future state needs to be aligned to the user experience in the business case. Because uh, a lot of the time we walk into uh, our clients and we talk about uh, what they have today and particular user uh, experiences and silos, like they may have one tool for audio conferencing, uh, a different solution for their telephony solution to requirements, and then working out how do we consolidate each of those, um, either in a phase process or in more of a big bang consolidation. And I guess the solution that we're going to provide to them is ultimately a cost saving over the board because of all these different platforms that they're having to manage now as we give them one solution, I guess. Yeah, exactly. That's um, that's a huge point, actually, because yeah. uh, you know, you've got investments in each of these particular silos, um, and those can be you know, quite significant. Yeah. And so by consolidating those onto a Microsoft Communications Cloud, they're getting all that value um, on a monthly basis, and then, and then some again with things like you know, the ability to install Office 2016 on five different devices that people yeah. have. So uh, change management is really a, uh, a four-step uh, approach. That's the approach that uh, Modality takes to coming in and deploying uh, Sky for Business solutions. The first one, uh, which I suggest is probably the, the most critical, is launching communication. So letting everyone know what's happening. So that's uh, from, from the top down as well. So that's engaging your key stakeholders, working it with the, uh, the, the heads of the business, the, um, the C-level executives of the business, talking to them about the changes that are coming and letting that filter down through, making sure everyone is aware of what's coming so there's no surprises that are sprung on end users at the end of the day. The second one is training. Now, modality focus very heavily on training and user adoption, making sure that uh, users feel incredibly comfortable with using their technology. At the end of the day, we've all been given a, a piece of technology, not really understood how it worked, maybe tried it out a few couple of times and then put it to the side, we've given up on it. What we focus on is making sure that absolutely everyone that uses their technology feels very comfortable using it and is able to use it effectively. They know from day one how that piece of technology works once it's rolled out. Thirdly, alongside the training, uh, we use our apps as well. We have an app called Help Me that we can use to answer user-related questions, even connect remotely to those users and demonstrate how to, how to perform a particular task within Skype if they have a question. And lastly, on the day that we go live, so once everyone feels comfortable with the technology and how it works, we'll go live with the technology and we'll walk the floor, quite literally, walking the floor, answering users' questions, showing people how the headset works, and demonstrating, obviously, particular tasks and answering any questions that they may have. It's really important to help, like, that, so people don't suffer in silence, I think, because Absolutely, yeah. sometimes it's kind of, you know, negative sentiment can brew within the user base sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And it's very important to uh, to address those users' concerns as well. Quite often you find in classroom-based training, people don't want to speak up about questions that they may have. However, they'll grab you when you come around and say, oh, I've got this problem, how do I fix this? And nine times out of 10, it's a, it's a five second fix and they're happy and they're on their way. And obviously our floor walking also incorporates, you know, we're also hands-on technically um, as well as teaching them how to use it, you know, we are able to 
obviously fix problems on the floor on, on the go helping leverage the existing IT department so that they can focus on what we're doing and we can actually roll out the solution from end to end yeah absolutely so as a consultant our jobs are not just to roll out the solution it's also to ensure that our users at the end of the day use that solution and feel comfortable using that solution So once we've rolled out the actual pilot stage, we will obviously have the pilot users. We will get feedback from the pilot users to understand how they progressed with the testing and how they're using the solution. And once that's done, we'll obviously put all that feedback together and we'll get the business now to engage the other users and obviously talk about how they're going to onboard the entire user base. Are they going to segregate them? Are they going to go by department? And if they're going to go by department, obviously then we'll engage the department, give them the feedback we have from the pilot users, give them a demonstration of the solution, give, take them through the user adoption phase. And then when they're comfortable and they actually feel like they're being listened to, that we're addressing their issues and show them the devices, then we'll start onboarding the users. So I will always recommend a phased migration rather than a big bang once the pilot's completed, you know, so that everyone feels like they're, everyone's working around. Once, like if you're sitting next to your colleague and you're using the application, you, you're in, coming in the morning all chirpy and you're using the solution, you'll feel like, oh, that's going really well. You know, I want to be there. I want to get there. That's the feel that we're trying to get across. It's funny how news travels as well. Um, yeah. You'll often find if you're if you're cutting over a certain floor, potentially, who, who may be on the pilot, um, people from other floors uh, trying to find out bits of pieces of information. They want to always join the pilot as well and find out what all this all this noise is about with this new piece of technology. So people people get excited about it. And also devices. Devices start moving around. People right, are yeah. getting interested in devices. What devices they have. Yeah, I think we've definitely seen that if like a new device turns up in a meeting room or somebody's got like a new yeah. Bluetooth headset, people start to ask some questions. Mm. That's right, yeah. And then also the device selection is important in general, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, the user base need to be fully aware of the devices that are going to be available. You know, you shouldn't restrict your user saying, this is my user base, this is the only headset you can get. That can sometimes lead to, you know, feeling like you're left out. Mm. You know, give them the selection. You know, they might use the most expensive one, but then you can obviously determine from the selection you've given, you know, what's most cost effective to the team. It's funny, users um, users' connection to, to the technology a lot of the times is that headset. So getting yeah. that headset right is, is almost critical. Yeah, the solution can be the best solution ever deployed when it comes to the headset. If you've got a 20 buck headset off the shelf like an yeah. iPhone <laughs> or a Android headset, your experience can be really poor. That experience determines how you move forward. Yeah, yeah, it's a really good point. Um, and really on that experience as well, uh, what sort of things do we need to look at when it comes to the network? Obviously modality, we uh, recommend doing a, a complete network analysis. We have what's called network assessment. We will go to the customer, engage the customer, deploy bots in the environment. We'll run through a whole raft of analysis. So we will be simulating how multiple users will be making calls to each other and also joining a conference in the environment which will give us a better overview. It might even open up some eyes within the network team saying, this is where your problem is, this is the switch that you might look at, the jitter, the noise you're getting. You know, we will look at Wi-Fi, what uh, frequency you're using, 2.4, 5 kilohertz, how is that going to affect your Bluetooth devices in the floor, you know, your sort of the density ratio. You know, that's a level of detail that we will go into to provide you a clear understanding of the end result that you're going to get, meaning you want it to work.